we instructed them from the commandments that on the Sabbath they were not allowed to work at all. You know the people who broke that covenant regarding the Sabbath and they hatched their own plan thinking they would make a fool of us. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The story of the Sabbath breakers is about a group of people from the Bani Israel who lived in a village by the sea and they used to get their livelihood from fishing. And Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, we instructed them from the commandments that on the Sabbath they were not allowed to work at all. A Sabbath in Arabic is Sarray. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them and commanded them to abstain away from working on Sarray. And when we say Sarray, Sarray begins from Friday night and it ends by Sarray night, which when the sun sets on Sarray. That's the beginning of the day and the end of the day. Bani Israel was commanded not to fish on the day of a Sabbath, on the Sabbath. But because these people had got used to doing wrong, Allah sent upon them a fitna. Fitna means, what does a fitna mean? A, a test, a trial. So what was this fitna? These people on the Sabbath, the fishermen, they used to notice the fish are all coming. And when it was the Sunday, the fish all went away. So Friday, no fish. Saturday, like the fish knew. And you know what? Today we're not going to be fished. So let's all go and tease these people. Every day there was no fish in the sea. Nothing. But the one day they were not allowed to fish, that's the Sabbath. What did they find? The fish were jumping out of the water. So many fish. Now you may think that if this happened to you, you'd say this is a, a sign from Allah. Let me make Toba. Let me change. So on Saturday, the fin, you know, if, if you've been a fisherman, when you see the fin, you know that the top part of the fish, you go crazy. You go crazy. But this happens on Saturday. But one group amongst these people, what did they do? They decided to set their nets the night before. So the Sabbath begins like our day. So just before Maghrib, they put the nets out in the sea. So they didn't do any work on the Sabbath, right? And then just after Maghrib, the next day, they collected the nets full of fish. And they say, you see, we didn't work on the Sabbath. We did the work before and we did the work after. They wanted to find a loophole around the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what did they do? They came on Friday evening and cast all their nets. Sunday morning, they picked them up with all the fish. Surely you can understand this is a sign and a test from Allah. Surely what is intended is that you should not cause any work to be done on the Sabbath. Even if you do it before and do it after, you're missing the point. You're still causing the fish to be caught. So there was a group amongst these people. They were giving da'wah. They went to these people. They said, listen, fear Allah. Don't do this. Stop this. You know, you're breaking the command of Allah. This is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they were giving them da'wah. And there was another group of people. They weren't breaking the Sabbath. They weren't disobeying the commands of Allah. But they said to the people who were giving da'wah, why do you bother with these people whom Allah is about to destroy and send upon them a terrible punishment? So they knew that Allah was going to destroy these people. They knew it. But they said to the ones giving da'wah, why are you bothering? Why do you keep on advising them when you know Allah is going to punish them? When you know Allah is going to destroy them? Stop wasting your time. So the ones who were giving da'wah, they said something very important. They said, so that we will do our duty before our Lord. We are advising them so that we will have an excuse on the day of judgment that we did our job. And also, maybe they might listen. Maybe they might come back and be righteous people. So this verse tells us the importance of an Islamic principle, commanding what is good and forbidding what is evil. They didn't want to stand in front of Allah and Allah will ask them. So they knew that da'wah was an obligation. Now the people of that town saw this trick. Who are you trying to trick? Are you trying to trick Allah Azza wa Jal? Are you playing a game on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you set up your net before Sarray enters and then you leave it until Sarray is over and then you go and take all the fish that's caught in that net and you say to yourself you didn't do anything on Sarray. This is a trick, this is a game. So Allah Azza wa Jal let those 
who were disobeying him to continue disobeying him. And this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's way. When someone disobeys Allah, Allah does not punish them then and there. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets go of them and lets them and gives them the opportunity for them to repent to him, for them to go back to him. But it reach to that time and limit where Allah will just destroy them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as a punishment, we converted them into apes because they transgressed. Allahu Akbar. He actually transformed them into apes, chimpanzees. Brothers and sisters in Islam, a lot of Muslims, unfortunately now, they assume that they can trick Allah. They can do all type of things that Allah doesn't know. Allah Azza wa Jal sent His wrath on them. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala sent His punishment and curse upon them. The Allah deformed them and turned them into apes and monkeys. And then three days after that, they were all destroyed. They did not have any progeny. They do not have any offsprings. They wanted to trick who? They wanted to trick Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says, and it is a lesson for those who fear Allah. Don't you ever think you could trick Allah? Don't say what's haram, it's halal, but try and justify it another way. We have people these days, they want to justify everything. Justify smoking, oh, there's nothing wrong with it. Justify taking riba, as long as it's my first house. Justify drinking alcohol, it's not called alcohol, it's a different drink. Justify this and justify that. This is the lesson that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be taught. He wants to teach us, then trick Allah Azza wa Jal. You cannot trick Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then play games with the deen of Allah. Allah's deen is so straight. Allah's deen is so clear. Allah's deen is so evident. Al halal ubayyan wal haram ubayyan. Halal is clear, haram is clear. And in between them, there are matters which are doubtful. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, leave those doubtful matters. But if you look carefully in the Quran, brothers, we see three groups of people. The Sabbath breakers, the ones giving dawah, and the ones who are not breaking the Sabbath, but they were not giving dawah. But Allah only rescued one group of people. Allah mentions in the Quran the meaning of which is, we rescued those who forbade evil, and we sent upon the wrongdoers a grievous punishment. And when they forgot that by which they had been reminded, we saved those who had forbidden evil. So Allah says, we saved the ones that advised the sinners. And we seize those who committed the sin with a wretched punishment because they were defiantly disobedient. So he said, Ibn Abbas عنه, says, But Allah didn't even bother to mention those who didn't commit the sin, but refused to go and warn the sinners. Therefore, brothers and sisters, the commanding of what is good and the forbidding of what is evil is why our ummah is the best ummah. It is why Allah created us. It is a fundamental principle of our religion to preach what is good, to warn against what is bad. Our Prophet wasallam said in that famous hadith, you are going to command what is right or you and you are going to forbid what is evil or else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give a punishment that encompasses everybody. In other words, once evil becomes rampant and nobody says anything, nobody wants to stop it, then when Allah's punishment come, everybody is equally guilty. But if you spoke out, if you did something to try to stop it within your realm, then you will be excused on judgment day. That at least I did what I was supposed to do. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, whoever amongst you sees an evil, let him correct it with his hand. If he's not able to do it with his tongue, if he's not able to do it, then at least with his heart and let him hate that evil. And that is the weakest level of Iman. Beloved brothers and sisters, we were going through the life of the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, Musa alayhi salatu was salam. We have three beautiful stories that are mentioned in the Quran, incidents that occurred during the life of Musa alayhi salatu was salam. We will start with the first one where the story of the cow. And a full surah, the biggest surah in the Quran Kareem, is named after the incident Al Baqarah the cow. Sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahu bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayh.